So thanks for joining my session. Um, this session will be about uh, test containers. Um, so uh, a framework which is uh, suitable for uh, writing integration tests. And I want to show you uh, why you should use this and how, how you use this framework. We all love tests, uh, especially if, if they are automated. Of course, we know, OK, we, we do often manual tests. But um, yeah, if we can automate tests, uh, then it's, uh, it's better. Software development is not a single person job. Uh, we often work in teams. And as, an, as a team, um, everyone is uh, contributing to the same project. And uh, yeah, uh, one of the main things that we do uh, all day is uh, looking at the code of others. And how do we rate um, if this code is good? Yeah, we need test, tests for this. No? So um, uh, this should be automated by uh, ex executed by the CI server. And uh, if the CI server um, says, OK, every test have, has, has been successfully run, then we are fine. No? Um, and if there's something failing, then you have to do something before uh, we uh, go in the code review again. So the more tests we have, the better uh, we can say, OK, um, the project is in a good state. Uh, you might know this um, testing pyramid. Uh, so we uh, love to um, run uh, unit tests because they are small, they are fast, and um, they are quite stable. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so this, this is. Um, what we can, uh, what we should write as most, um, and uh, yeah, when we um, work with other external resources, then we have, um, then we're talking about integration tests, and we tend to write them um, less, and there because they are, um, yeah, also have more heavyweight. Uh, they change with the uh, data model that we have. We uh, might have ex external resources, different kind, uh, kind of, and it's more cumbersome to to, to write them. And integrated tests, uh, yeah, they um, are running on a production year environment, and uh, they are much more slower. They are more cost intensive, intensive, and uh, therefore we tend to write, um, yeah, as most unit tests. But when we talk about um, microservices, then the situation becomes a bit different um, because um, there's not so much logic really in in the uh, application. It's uh, often about communication with other resources, so with database or with uh, with a Kafka system or so, and uh, then we um, yeah have to see um, yeah that this is working, no? um, and yeah in the past it was so that that you usually um, set up your environment and have a test database against you uh, you run your tests, and you have to make sure that the uh, this database in, is in the right state. Um, so you um, start the uh, database, set up um, the, um, the schema inside, maybe fill some data into it, and this takes time, and then the tests are executed. Huh? Test containers is now um, uh, approaching this, that, uh, that this becomes better and faster. So let's t t uh, take a look at a typical use case that I want to show you um, right now. Um, we have an um, application, Spring Boot application. Um, with database, and uh, yeah, we want to test this. Um, in production, we might want to use Postgres, um, and yeah, if you um, yeah, uh, setting up Postgres on your uh, local development and for, and for tests, this might be a bit more complicated and uh, more heavyweight, and therefore you tend maybe to uh, to use a more lightweight database, um, like um, in memory database. And uh, yeah, the problem is here. You're using a different uh, infrastructure than in production. Better would be if we, uh, we could use the same infrastructure. And uh, database is not the only resource that you might want to uh, work with in your application. Um, so maybe you want to um, yeah, integrate uh, as, uh, in file storage with S3 or uh, Kafka streams or um, or a business process engine or whatever. No? And this, uh, if you want to uh, set this everything up, this is quite much of work. And here, test containers comes in. Test containers is a Java library uh, which is mainly a wrapper around Docker. Uh, the idea is here that you just um, uh, spawn up your resources as Docker images, and uh, this can be done fast, uh, and they must be disposable. And um, all the, this cleanup will, uh, will be also done by the test containers framework. And uh, you can 
literally um, yeah, run everything what um, is packageable in, in a Docker container and write tests against that. Test containers has a um, couple of um, already provided um, modules, um, yeah, all the databases that you, uh, that you know, and uh, yeah, also measuring systems and so on. But you can also write your own. Um, I will show you this uh, with um, an S3 storage uh, that we will integrate, which is not part of uh, this modules. And yeah, so that's uh, enough for the slides. Let's uh, look at some code. So where we do, do we start? Um, let's say we, we want um, to uh, use Spring Boot. Um, there's a Spring Boot initializer. And uh, yeah, here we can just say, okay, we want to use um, Postgres. And we can also say here, we want to use test containers. If we look here, um, what will be produced out of this, uh, then we see um, it's ma mainly um, um, a POM dependency, which will be added. So here's um, the build of materials for test containers. And test containers is just a simple um, yeah, dependency in your um, project. So this one here. And it is tightly integrated with JUnit. We also see that um, uh, Postgres has been added. Um, and uh, yeah, let's see what, what happens uh, with this application. So this is the initial state. And um, what we would get um, from, from this, um, from this uh, generator is um, basic uh, Spring Boot application. And here in the test four, we have already um, a Spring Boot test. Um, it's quite empty, but it does already something because um, uh, bec uh, because it's a Spring Boot test. It will already um, try to start up the application and um, and see that all the beans uh, that are contributed here to this application can be wired. So let's see what what happens um, uh, when I would uh, start this now up. Um, oh wait, I forgot. To to stop, maybe. So um, I would try to run this, and it fails. Why? Because there's no database. No? Um, so I would need to start up some database, and uh, yeah, uh, what I, as a developer, would then do is typically um, yeah, provide a Docker Compose file, which uh, will add me a database and I can start this up. So a Postgres database running on uh, its default port and exposing this port. So I will start this one up. Okay, so that's quite fast. And uh, do you think that, this, uh, that the test uh, will succeed now? Yes, it will. Um, because I have also configured now um, the connection properties uh, for, for this, um, uh, for this uh, database. And uh, the application will uh, try to connect to this uh, Postgres database on this port um, with, this, um, yeah, with the, these credentials here. So let's see what happens. So the test is running, um, so the application can connect to the database, um, but it is um, depending on the database that I have manually started. And typically I want not that the integration test use the same database um, as I would do for local development. So because the, database, the, integration uh, the integration test will pollute this database. I want to have a clean database. No? And um, so now we got the next step. Let's add some logic. Um, we want to uh, make a photo album, and uh, therefore we have a um, small entity which we want to uh, store in the database. We have um, so it's uh, yeah, a normal bean with uh, entity annotation. We have a repository, nothing special here, and we have a service uh, which should now uh, be used to. Um, create photo albums or music albums or whatever um, uh, within uh, the, the database. And we write the test that it uses, this repository and the service, and um, it will insert some 
albums into the um, into this um, the interface. So um, let's see what happens if this is succeeding. Yes, all fine now. But what happens if I stop now the database? My tests don't run because they're using the wrong database. So now test containers comes in. With test containers, I can now say in this test, please use a Postgres database and start this up um, uh, for my tests. It will uh, run on a random port and I have now to assign um, the random port um, for the properties that, uh, that the application uses in, during the test. To do this, um, I add just the test containers annotation. Second, um, I want to um, use the Postgres uh, container and there's um, uh, a built-in um, container, Postgres SQL container, container, new Postgres SQL container. And now I can also specify more properties like uh, which database name I want to use, or, uh, which username I want to use in, during the test, and um, yeah, also some more specific um, uh, things for, um, for Postgres. Okay, um, that's basically it for the moment. But I have also now to say, okay, um, uh, I want to annotate this with the container annotation. Will this now succeed? Mm, that does not look good at the moment. Um, the thing now is um, that uh, the Spring, uh, Spring Boot application will try to um, use the properties that I defined in the application properties. And there's still um, the JDBC connection here to say, okay, I want, I want to use the default port. And, and on this port, there's no database. Um, so I have now to say, before you actually start this, um, um, this application, um, start up the test container and get the properties uh, from this container and use this to override um, the, the, these properties here. And since uh, Spring Boot, I think 226, um, there is a concept uh, called uh, dynamic uh, property source. And I can use this. So first of all, I have to say that here is this annotation, and there I will use a dynamic property registry. And now I can put properties into this registry, which will override the settings. So I want to say this is the URL, and from where do I get the URL? I get this from the container. So, post, um, so test containers will now expose um, the generated JDBC URL for, for us. So I don't have to care on which port it runs, and I uh, don't have to uh, know um, how the connection string is. Um, it will just uh, provide me this. So let's um, add the two other properties now. Username and password. And 
here we go. Let's see what happens now. Now something interesting is uh, happening. Uh, we will see the logs. Uh, before the uh, Spring application starts, uh, what's here? Fail to close response. I, it's a bit unexpected. Um, so I see a little of, bit of debug information. Um, I have to. I should uh, maybe overwrite the logging uh, level. Um, that to now show me the debug output here. But what it uh, does will n uh, is now uh, to um, uh, check, okay, here I want to use um, um, a test container for Postgres, and uh, it will start up this um, container. Um, on demand, if I don't have this container locally, it will pull this container from the registry, and uh, then, then uh, it will be started. It gets a random port, and um, um, after I, I did this, I can uh, now execute my tests against this um, uh, database, and this database will be disposed after um, the test has been executed. Um, for this test here, I uh, used a static instance um, of the container. This will um, uh, start up the test container just once per class. Um, if I would uh, use an instance variable, then it w would uh, start um, the fresh database um, per test execution. Let me shortly revert. So in this branch, I have already configured the uh, logging. And then we have now, now a bit less verbose output here. So you will see, okay, it created a um, container. Um, it starts Postgres, and uh, somewhere is also the port mentioned. So I could now debug into this application and um, see um, yeah, what is the um, URL. Actually, I'm uh, printing this now out here. So let's look for this um, output. And I will see. Okay, this connection string has been provided um, has been provided by the container framework. So now, what can I do else with this? Um, if if I have this container here, I can um, yeah qu uh, do quite many things with it. I could, for example, um, um, yeah access logs. I could attach um, a logging consumer. Um, so, like for example, um, SL4J. And say, okay, what is the deep, uh, the log output? What the, uh, this uh, container provides me, um, or I could uh, copy files into the container or get files from the container. So um, it's quite easily uh, to access. Um, think about uh, what what you have to do uh, if you would uh, use this with Docker commands. Um, so it's uh, quite handy if if you ju can just uh, use some API methods for this. Um, let me see. I think I have attached a logger um, in the next slide. And what can we also do is um, I can specify, for example, um, that I have to wait for a um, specific port um, to be opened, that I wait um, for um, a specific log message um, that has to, be, uh, has to appear in the container until um, the test is actually started. So now let's um, go one step further. And let's say we want now to um, create um, our own container. Um, so I will add now min.io. Min.io is, um, is um, a service which implements um, the S3 protocol, so like AWS. Um, but for local development, it's uh, much more handy to use um, uh, MinIO, and I don't have to connect to an AWS server. And this so totally can run locally. But there is no container for this um, by default. And But the um, test containers framework gives us a handy um, base class, the generic container. And I can create now my own container, which um, derives from it. 
and I have to say, okay, uh, for example, what is the image that I um, have to start? Uh, which parts do I want to expose? Uh, for what do I wait um, until um, the container is actually ready? Um, for example, yeah, um, a an open port or a path on an um, on HTTP or HTTPS, or I could uh, wait for a log message or whatever. No? Um, let's look here. Um, so in this case, um, I st said, okay, um, this container is using a, um, yeah, an image, of course. Um, I'm, use, um, I'm exposing certain network alias. I expose the default port for Minino, which is 9000. Um, and um, yeah, put in some very environment variables. Uh, for example, it's here, here user credentials for the root, root user. This is what the container needs to start. Um, I can say what command has to be executed within the container. I can actually also uh, yeah, execute more commands within the container when it has been started. And um, I say, OK, please wait um, until the default port has been opened and uh, that the end health endpoint is available and uh, uh, wait for this at uh, most 15 seconds. <coughs> so um, our test has been a bit extended and also our service. Um, the service will now um, use an S3 client and it wants to connect to this, um, um, to this MinIO server uh, to create um, yeah, not only an album, but also uh, a bucket within, um, uh, within the, uh, the S3 storage. Bucket is mainly kind of folder, and you, there you could put uh, in some files later, which is not here. Um, but uh, when I create an album, I want to create a bucket also. So the test does not change. Um, it's just the service call which changed here. Let's execute this. And still successful. Let's look for some um, output messages. We see here a bucket has been created. So connection to, um, to the storage has been um, successful and I put in here uh, I can communicate here with this uh, new service. Um, in this case, I used um, yeah, Postgres and um, and uh, yeah, Minio. They start up quite fast, and this is what we want. No? Uh, we want to uh, to have um, fresh resources. Um, the, the database is empty. The, uh, the Minio service is empty, and they start up within um, uh, two seconds. And uh, then I can um, yeah, execute my integration tests, um, which uh, do something with, the, with these external sources, and then they are disposed. And since they are so fast, um, they um, can be happily run with each commit on the build server. But not all of uh, the containers that we might want to use are so friendly to start up in two seconds. No? Um, if you would, uh, for example, um, use Kamunda as a, as a business process modeling engine. Um, let's see what what this would do if I would try to start this up. This takes quite a while until this is available. It starts on Tomcat server. It deploys multiple um, application on uh, on this server. Uh, yeah, and this can take minutes until this service is available. And um, this is not what we want. Um, there's an experimental feature now in the test containers, uh, which is called reusable containers. Um, so what we want is uh, to uh, start this service just once up. And uh, yeah, when I um, execute a test again, then it will uh, detect, oh, here is already a test container running somewhere. Um, and I will just use this resource. To enable this, um, yeah, we have to, uh, to um, uh, provide. Yeah, we have to think uh, about some things here. Um, first of all, um, we do not use the uh, container annotation because the lifecycle has has to be changed. When I use the container annotation, this will also um, uh, remove the container after the test has been um, executed. So um, just use this without. 
Um, the container itself will um, have um, a property with reuse, but this I itself does not enable this feature. Um, to actually um, enable it, you have to provide um, a property file on, in your home directory, the .testcontainers.properties file, and there you have to enter .testcontainers.reuse.enable. And uh, within your test, you have to um, uh, manually start the container then. So let's look at this. I also provided here um, my own container. So okay, um, in, internally it will expose um, port 8080 and the application is um, uh, available when this endpoint is there. And uh, yeah, this can take a while. So I have said, okay, uh, startup time could be six minutes. Um, this is actually what I had today. Um, and uh, I also have to increase the memory that uh, this container has by default um, and uh, yeah, enable the reuse. In the test, uh, in, in this test, I just added this container and um, yeah, start up the container here um, in the before all method. Let's execute this again. and my tests are still fast. Um, now let's try just to remove this here. Yeah, and now we see, okay, it's, it wants to start a new Kamunda engine and uh, yeah, I have to wait and uh, yeah, that's, um, that's what, not what I don't want to do here. Okay. So, um, to sum it a bit up, um, Tesco Trainers is a, is a very easy to use um, framework for Java. Um, there are also implementations for other languages, uh, but uh, yeah, I mainly uh, work with Java. Um, and uh, I use this also in my daily work. Um, we, are, we are building uh, Spring Boot applications with um, um, yeah, some external resources and uh, yeah, um, our tests um, run usually uh, within uh, 10 minutes and uh, yeah, somewhere around this, uh, this is also the maximum that I would, uh, that I would accept per build. You know? um, it's quite easy to use and stable and uh, yeah, um, important thing is also when you work with Docker uh, that uh, the resources that, uh, that you create are properly um, also cleaned up. So um, after uh, the test uh, um, has been executed, it will make sure that uh, the networks um, have been um, detached and uh, the container um, images have been um, you know, removed and so on. So you don't have to care about this. No? And uh, also important is that uh, whenever you have a problem, you can um, yeah, just create your own um, uh, container. You can even write um, yeah, kind of inline Docker file um, within um, uh, with the API of um, of test containers. So, if you example, for example, if you have to extend an existing uh, Docker image um, and um, add some more commands or no more software into it, then you can just uh, write a generic container which um, yeah, contains um, uh, yeah, a DSL-like script uh, to um, execute more things with this uh, with this image. And by doing this, uh, yeah, we, have, um, we are quite happy to uh, write t uh, integration tests, and uh, they are um, much faster than we, uh, that, uh, than we are used bef uh, from before, and uh, much more lightweight. And uh, yeah, so I can say, okay, um, I would heavily recommend to, uh, to, to use this framework. So this is basically it. Um, there um, is time for some questions now. Um, please do not forget uh, to uh, evaluate the session. I hope you liked it. Um, and uh, I'm open here now for questions. Thank you. Possible to deploy uh, several ancillary containers uh, uh, like uh, Docker Compose that are 
aware of each other, that they share a network with you. Mm -hmm. Question is, is it possible to, um, to use multiple resources which share a um, certain network like um, um, uh, we are used in Docker Compose files. There you can say, okay, um, this de container depends on another and they are both on the same network and so on. Yes, it is possible to do this. You can actually um, uh, construct your own um, Docker Compose also with the DSL of, of test containers. More questions? Yes. Uh, is it possible to run the test containers on a, a remote machine? So let's say we have a development Kubernetes cluster, something-ish, uh, and we do not have access to Docker or container um, runtime on our local development machines. Mm -hmm. So the question is, um, is it possible to run uh, test containers on a remote machine? Um, because we might not have um, access uh, to Docker on, on this machine where it's executed. Um, test container, uh, there's a uh, feature called Test Containers Cloud. So there's a cloud service that you could actually use and say, okay, please just run these tests on that cloud and uh, then come back. Okay, th then if then if there are no questions more, um, I'm available at Stammtisch. Uh, there we can share some uh, beer and uh, uh, some thoughts. Thank you. <laughs>